Good morning. This is Sunday, January 10th, 2021, and uh, this is the Commandments of the New Testament. We're uh, in episode 109. Goodness. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, your biblical duty to mankind, and among those are commandments uh, uh, and uh, 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 instruction from God uh, that he alone chooses our leaders. Uh, this says something critical about uh, the vote. Uh, I'm not going to uh, belabor that point, but uh, uh, you should know that, that uh, your vote can be considered uh, a prayer, um, uh, an act of prayer to God. This is what you would like. <laughs> Um, and uh, we're instructed to pray um, for our desires to God. And uh, so our vote could be considered um, our prayer, although God uh, suggests that uh, not man, but he himself chooses our leaders. And uh, it's always kind of important to remember what God tells us uh, in no uncertain terms. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, let's begin with a, a quick review, a brief review of uh, what we were doing uh, the last couple times. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. These are our biblical duties to mankind. Uh, we are not to revile those who revile us. And uh, we are given specific instructions about being uh, reviled for our faith, um, uh, reviled for the sake of Christ. And uh, last time we uh, just jumped into briefly the, the question of uh, resisting authority. Uh, let me uh, read uh, the synopsis of that uh, uh, just, just to uh, uh, jump back to what we were talking about last time. While our culture often applauds the questioning of authority, God commands that we accept and submit to every authority over us, and for good reason. God alone chooses our leaders, all of them, all of the time. Furthermore, God tells us that their power comes from him, not from politics or bureaucracy. And whether or not they realize it, they are accountable to him, not to the law or themselves or their party, and certainly not to you. He is the Lord of lords, and as such, you are to obey every law of the land and pay all fines, fees, and taxes levied against you. Furthermore, you shall neither challenge, resist, nor disparage any leader over you, or, or else you suffer the punishment of God. Sometimes he gives us leaders that we deserve rather than the leaders we think we need. Never forget that God alone orchestrates the outcome of all things all the time. Let's, uh, let's jump right into uh, uh, the subcategory here under don't question or resist authority, uh, specifically God alone choosing our leaders. Let's turn together to Proverbs 8.15, chapter 8, verse 15. And once again, for those who are following along on uh, this this video, this recording, uh, I'll uh, uh, skip fairly quickly to the passage. So after I've uh, given you the, the passage uh, reference, uh, make sure that you pause the, the video and uh, find it before continuing. Chapter 8, verse 15. By me, kings reign and Princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all of the judges of the earth. Now, it's important to, to recognize that uh, God is calling us to not just recognize that he alone chooses our leaders, but uh, recognize also that he alone uh, conducts the affairs of men through these leaders. Sometimes it seems as though uh, things have gone off the rails. I know that uh, political elections, for instance, can be uh, not just controversial, but bitterly fought. Um, even among Christians, there are, are um, uh, almost violent opinions 
regarding who should and should not be elected to office. Uh, but God has uh, uh, has given us these things, uh, and uh, uh, regardless of the consequences of the times that they were given, uh, uh, whether they be in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, uh, uh, we are instructed to obey our leaders because God has chosen them. Uh, in the in the uh, uh, event of uh, the New Testament, uh, we were we were. Uh, being given these commandments at a time when Rome ruled over the Jews in Israel. Um, and and we're, we'll get a little bit more into that as we approach uh, uh, Romans 13. But uh, let's uh, move forward to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. He, that is, God, raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and he lift, lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, and set them among princes to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. Uh, skipping just for a moment for context purposes, uh, back up to verse 6. Uh, the Lord killeth, and he maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave, and he bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor, and he maketh rich. He bringeth low, and he lifteth up. The, uh, the uh, clear uh, meaning of the passage is that God is in control of all of these things. And uh, when someone is poor, it's because God made them poor. When they are rich, it's because God blessed them with riches. Sometimes I wonder if riches are such a blessing, given what else the Bible has to say about the wealthy. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we are to uh, give God the credit for the state of men, and not just Christians or Jews, but all men, whether they are believers or not. It's important for us to remember that God is God. He's not just applying for the job. Uh, in other words, uh, God is the God of all men, all men, whether they believe in him or not has nothing to do with it. God is the creator and he is in control of all things all the time, including all people, past, present, and future. He is God and there is no other God. Uh, there are idols, but they are fabrics of man's mythology and imagination. Uh, God is God, and he's not just asking you to believe in him so he can be your God. He is your God. He is the God of the atheist and the agnostic, even though they are not familiar with him, even though they may not believe in him. Nevertheless, he is their God. <clears throat> Let's continue in uh, 1 Chronicles 28.5. 1 Chronicles, chapter 28, verse 5. And of all of my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Uh, once again here, uh, David is uh, uh, acknowledging that the Lord has chosen both him and his son Solomon out of all of his sons to rule over the land. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. If he is constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. Jeremiah, chapter 27, verse 5. Jeremiah 27, verse 5. I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are upon the ground. By my great power and by my outstretched arm, and I have given it to whom it seemed meet or appropriate unto me. 
God's plan includes a wide variety of people, purposes, and plans, but invariably, no matter who they are, they are operating in God's domain, and he is in control of the outcomes of all things. Man, uh, there, there's a popular uh, uh, quote, I don't even remember where it came from, but uh, man proposes, but God disposes. Uh, it's uh, been recognized uh, throughout uh, Jewish and Christian history that God is in control of all things, regardless of what man thinks. How many times have you or I or anyone on the planet uh, decided what they were going to do, and they made plans, and they concocted and imagined and invented uh, things that they were going to work hard to accomplish, and yet at least half of the time, it seems, they fail to accomplish that goal, that that purpose to which they had committed themselves. Uh, there are successes and there are failures, and God is the one who controls successes and failures. God may not in and of himself be the cause of all things, but he is the orchestrator, the controller of the outcomes of all of those things. Daniel chapter 2 verse 21. Well, let's uh, uh, skip back to uh, uh, verse 19 to uh, uh, tie in the context here. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwell and and the light dwelleth with him. Uh, there are uh, a number of passages like this. Um, uh, let's uh, continue to chapter four of Daniel, just over a couple pages. Chapter four, verse thirty-two. Chapter four, verse thirty-two. And let's, uh, let's begin reading in verse 31 for the sake of context. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as the oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomever he will. Once again, God from heaven is telling us that he's in control, not just in control of the outcomes in this case. He's in specific and, and intimate control of who rules. The authorities over us from uh, from the President of the United States all the way down to uh, uh, the, uh, the guy behind the counter at the DMV and everywhere in between. These people who are in authority over some aspect of our lives, God has placed in their position in order to accomplish his purposes and his plans, not ours. Chapter 5 verses 18 to 23, Daniel chapter 5, verses 18 to 23. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, or uh, thy father, a kingdom, and majesty, and glory, and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, 
and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would slew and whom he would keep alive, whom he would set up and whom he would put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses and they fed him with grass like an, like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knowest all of this, but thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which is which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Uh, the, uh, the passage goes on, and I'll leave you to, to uh, pursue it on your own, but the point here is that not just your breath, not just your very life and death are in the hand of God, but who you are and what you may accomplish and what you may not accomplish, regardless of your own plan and purposes. Your successes are not determined by how carefully you plan. No man's are. God, it says in the book of Psalms, uh, holds the reins of our life. Um, once again, man proposes, but God disposes. Now let's turn to the New Testament, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. This is a familiar passage. In fact, I think we, we uh, talked briefly about this last time we were together. Romans 13. And I'll read verses 1 through 7. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Strong words. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but for conscience' sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. The, uh, the passages themselves should be clear. Paul was pinning this at the, at the breath, at the, at the instruction of God through him, the working of God through him, at a time that uh, uh, was dramatically worse for the Jews and the Christians uh, than uh, anything we can imagine here in the United States at this time. Uh, the uh, uh, footnote in the, in the, in the book's te uh, the text of the book says, this was penned by Paul, who spent much of his life in Roman prisons. In A.D. 58, during both the reign of Nero, uh, during both the reign of Nero, a horrific, 
a horrifically anti-Christian Caesar and the great Christian Holocaust by Rome that would last some 300 years, where 8 million men, women, and children would be tortured and executed for refusing to recant the name of Jesus. The, the idea that we are to submit ourselves to these authorities over us, uh, that God has put these authorities over us, may be repellent to many of us. Um, we've been brought up to question authority and uh, uh, to to be critical and to choose which authority we want over us. Um, this is not God's way, and he's, he makes this very clear in the pages of, uh, specifically in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament as well. God brought rulers over the children of Israel and ultimately over the Christian church, whom he desired, and he takes the credit for these things. Nero is often characterized as satanic in his activities against the church. This is wrong because God himself placed Nero there for his purposes, not for the Christians, nor for the church's purposes, nor for the individual's plans. Uh, the things that happen in, in this world are not based on luck or happenstance or fate. They are of God. They are of God. So when your plans go awry and they end up in failure to achieve those, those things for which you intended it, uh, this is God's hand. And don't ascribe it to Satan and don't, uh, don't ascribe it to uh, whoever the current president is. And do not defame nor, uh, uh, nor speak against those authorities over you. Um, I, uh, I, I can't help but think that I've been guilty of that myself many, many times in my life. Um, uh, most recently, I was tempted <laughs> this way uh, as I uh, tried to, uh, uh, to get some paperwork accomplished uh, or pushed through the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles. And, and uh, here in California, that's no mean feat. Uh, uh, the... Uh, the line uh, uh, to get in uh, to the DMV is ordinarily uh, very long and, and very slow, and, and it takes uh, literally hours just to get through the front door. Um, this is, ha has only been magnified recently by the, the COVID uh, crisis and, and social distancing and uh, mask wearing and, and the like. You can imagine how slow things get when um, uh, these uh, uh, measures for uh, uh, social distancing and, and such uh, uh, kick in at the DMV. Um, nevertheless, uh, I had to continuously remind myself that my uh, first trip, as well as the second trip, uh, was necessary according to God's plan, regardless of my own. And um, somehow that not only made it um, easy to do, but there was some satisfaction in knowing that I was a pawn in God's hand and I, he was using me for his good, uh, for his plan, and, uh, and not my own. Uh, there's some comfort in all of that. Uh, the next subject that we will look into further, uh, uh, not uh, not so much this time, but next time, is uh, obeying every law of the land. Now, now we've talked around this uh, uh, in, the, in the context of our leaders. That is, uh, don't question or resist the authorities that God has placed over us. Nevertheless, uh, the laws that are made, not just by uh, the people in authority over us, but by their minions, uh, these people uh, create laws that bother us to some extent or another. And uh, uh, it's important that we start motivating ourselves, get into the habit of every time you're, you're uh, disgusted with, with some silly thing uh, or some, some man that put into effect some silly thing, um, stop and remember that God is doing this and he's doing it for his plan and his purpose, regardless of your own. I, uh, I, there, there's a stretch of uh, Highway 18 here in uh, 
uh, in Southern California that goes across the top of the mountain and uh, we drive it on a regular basis. And uh, there's a long, long stretch of it. It is a highway after all, and there's a long, long stretch of it that is um, set up at 35 miles per hour maximum speed. And uh, every time we, we, we pass into this zone, uh, miles uh, uh, go by and we're still driving 35 miles an hour. And um, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to this. And, and of course, when it's lifted, then you can, you can drive, I don't know, 55 or whatever the highway will allow at that point. Uh, the, the reason for the 35 miles an hour has never really been expressed, nor does the government tend to, <laughs> to justify themselves. Uh, or explain why they set up the, the uh, uh, speed limits the way that they did. And so uh, from time to time, I, I can cross my arms and, and get a scowl on my face. <laughs> why, why can't I just drive at, at uh, the prima facie uh, uh, speed that uh, the highway will allow? Uh, why am I forced to do this silly thing I've told myself on numerous occasions that this law was obviously enacted or this ruling was enacted by somebody who probably doesn't even live in the mountains. They live uh, down the hill, but uh, for some reason, somebody decided 35 miles an hour along this stretch of highway was appropriate. Um, nevertheless, uh, it's important for us not to scowl or, or become disgusted with any such thing. Uh, the uh, the uh, official that, that made this rule, the people who set up these signs, and the policemen and the CHP uh, officers who, who enforce these rulings are in God's hand. And they are responsible to God, not the law and not to higher authorities. They are responsible to God for the decisions that they make, as are you and I. Uh, ultimately, uh, God is, is very clear on the fact that he set up these rulers, and in addition, these laws are important for us to obey according to God, and that's what we're, we're uh, going to focus on now. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2. And uh, verse 13 to 17, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, not for the sake of man, not for the sake of the authority of man, not for the sake of um, avoiding chaos in the land and uh, uh, enjoying the benefits of the rule of law, but for the Lord's sake whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God. You know how many Christians out there have spent a lifetime uh, uh, searching for and trying to uh, to determine the will of God, uh, the desires of God in my life. Uh, here it is, folks, for so is the will of God that with veil doing, <clears throat> with well doing, you may be put to silence, to put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Yes, we are free. We are free to obey God. We are free as long as we remember that we are ultimately responsible to God for obeying the laws of the land. Even though he wasn't the one uh, that directly was responsible for that law, he nevertheless tells us in no uncertain terms that we are responsible to him for obeying every law of the land. And we are to do it as free, but not for a cloak of maliciousness. We are to do it because we are the servants of the living God. Honor all men, love 
the brotherhood, that is the church. Fear God, honor the king or the president, regardless of your political persuasion. Let's turn to Philippians 2, verse 13. Philippians 2. Let's skip back to verse 12 for the sake of context. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You're responsible, folks. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. The, uh, the point that is made over and over again is that God is in control, and we are to see that control as quorum Dio. That is, we live our lives in the presence of God. The minute that we forget that, the minute that we start focusing horizontally instead of vertically, we are likely to become disgusted with the state of things, uh, uh, weary and, and complaining about the leaders that we have over us, um, uh, and oh my goodness, what if uh, this party or that party gets control of the Senate, and, and um, how how could it possibly be that we have the president over us now that that we we have uh, and all of the corruption that goes with it and and on and on and on uh, these things have existed since George Washington folks and uh, uh, it is no different now than it was back then now we have uh, more people in this country now than we did then but uh, politics continues to be silliness. Uh, in my own estimation, this is not biblical, uh, but in my own estimation, politics, uh, whether it is corporate politics or national politics, is something that we should avoid like the plague. Uh, it's kind of like pornography. And the answer is just say no and get away from it. Don't get involved in it. Don't try to change the world for good through politics. It can't be done because God is in control. So if you want to change the world, then do it in the presence of God, not in the presence of a senator or a congressman or the president or the uh, chief of police or any other leader because God is the Lord of all of these other lords. Let's, uh, let's close there. I Next love time. you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul, rejoice, take joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm.